The public is largely unaware that expandable polystyrene, which is abbreviated to EPS, can be industrially recycled in an efficient process. Mostly white EPS components that are used as packaging materials, as well as the often grey insulation boards used in the construction industry, can be recycled by means of various processes. At the start of the loop, EPS is produced from expandable polystyrene beads known in the trade as granulate. This granulate is expanded by the processor and compressed to form insulation boards or packaging mouldings. These products are then distributed to manufacturers of building products, DIY stores, producers of electrical appliances like washing machines or food wholesalers. Let's look at packaging first. White EPS packaging mouldings have a lifespan of 6 to 12 months after which they are collected in large volumes from retailers or end consumers and taken to be mechanically recycled. In Germany, medium-sized companies have specialised in recycling EPS waste from the packaging and insulation industries. They process the material to manufacture secondary products which then re-enter the economic cycle. Let's move on to the recovery process. The recycling companies collect the EPS waste directly from the customer or waste disposal company using specialist, fuel-efficient trucks known as high-volume vehicles. The recycling process begins with an inspection in which contaminated material is separated out. A small amount of EPS made from insulation boards containing the now-banned flame-retardant HBCD is also still in circulation. This is detected using X-ray fluorescence analysis during the inspection of incoming goods and acceptance is refused. A conveyor belt moves the clean, high-quality pieces to a further processing stage. When breaking down the EPS mouldings, we pre-sort the delivered material manually before it goes through a pre-shredder. It's first cut into palm-sized pieces and then subjected to further grinding and sieving processes. The resulting material, called shred, is widely applicable. It's used as an additive for the plaster and mortar industry, in seat cushions, as a pore forming agent in brick manufacturing and as a thermally insulating leveling compound in flooring construction. In addition to loose mouldings, recycling companies also receive EPS that has been compressed into solid rods. Unlike mouldings, compressed EPS cannot be ground down into beads, but is instead extruded after the shredding process. Simply put, an extruder is like a mincing machine in which the material is reconsolidated under high temperatures and pressure before being forced through a perforated plate. The material is melted down in the extruder, degassed and pushed through a sieve and then a perforated plate under pressure. Rotating blades then chop it into granules which fall into a water bath to cool before being sieved out. The result of the process is PS regranulate, the second recycled product made from EPS waste. It has almost the same properties as the original but is a little darker in colour. The regranulate can be used as a raw material for XPS insulation boards among other applications. The various loose recycled products are then delivered to the customer in sacks or often in a pumpable form in the case of EPS shred. As a result, the loop from waste to new customer product is closed. EPS, especially packaging EPS, is highly recyclable and has been for over 20 years. Incredibly, few people are aware of this. Next to other products, EPS shred and regranulate can be used to produce new insulation materials. When it comes to insulation material, particularly from deconstruction, energy recovery is still the most practical solution for used EPS. The sector is working hard to develop recycling processes, especially in this area. The EPS Circular Economy Efficient recycling methods already exist for EPS packaging and efforts to close the loop are being made for EPS insulation materials.